Hello, everyone. Good morning. Sending out high fives, abrazos, hearts, smiley faces. Hope everyone is doing fine. Activate your microphone. Activate activate your video. Say hello. Hi. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Show me your faces, everyone. It's always best to see your, your faces. Even if you have your microphone muted, feel free to leave the video on. It just makes it a little more dynamic. It's always good to see a human being at the other end. It's always good. Pictures are good, but, you know. Hopefully we'll be back soon face-to-face -face like we used to be. How are things going with your classes, guys? What, what's your most difficult class so far? Imprope. <laughs> Listening, speaking, right? Writing. What's your most difficult class so far? Your grammar and writing. Okay, so listening, speaking, grammar, and writing. Anybody else? What's the hardest class to do online? What's the hardest class in Prope to do, like, online? Maybe writing. Writing? What um, makes it What makes it challenging? I think um, we have to be like face to face with the teacher because um, it's more difficult to explain like grammar rules and stuff. So sometimes for me, it's not easy like to identify the rules or how to use them. And even if the teacher explains us like with examples, I think it would be better if I were in a classroom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you. Anybody else have any uh, thoughts? Actually, I first. Yeah. Actually, I'm um, writing too. Writing. Are you guys sharing your documents online with your instructor? In writing? Are you using OneDrive? Um, yes, but um, right now he is just like explaining us like the rules and stuff. We're not doing exercise yet. Alrighty. All right, guys. Um, today, let's get into it. Um, Today what I'd like to do is I want to give you guys time to prepare for your podcast. Today we're going to talk very specifically about now how to create your podcast. Some of you have been asking, well, what do I do? What do I include in my podcast? And I, want, I wanted to wait until today to really go over the details about how to create a good podcast. Okay. So that's going to be our focus for today. How do we now start thinking about creating a podcast? Today, we're going to have another opportunity to work in our teams or on, in our groups. Today, we're going to work in the same groups that we worked in on Monday. Okay. A same space. Okay. So you're going to go into your same groups. But before I do that, I'd like to give you guys some strategies, some tips, and just some things that I think will help you as a student in our BA. And what I want to share with you today is a search engine called DuckDuckGo. Now, all of you, all of you know that Google is a search engine, right? So you search online, you're typically going to use Google. But there are other options, and one of the options I really like is called DuckDuckGo. Now, it's got a funny name. 
DuckDuckGo. This is, let me go to the main page. This is the main page, okay? But what DuckDuckGo is, it basically is a search engine. And in any browser, if you're using Chrome on your computer, and this is for cell phones, mobile devices of any kind, your computer. If you want to use DuckDuckGo, you can add it to your browser, right? And you can select DuckDuckGo instead of Google. You don't have to use Google. If you really want to, you can use Yahoo or Bing. Of course, in my case, Bing is recommended because I'm using Edge, but it works just fine on Chrome, Firefox, just about, just about any browser. So what does this do? So why do I like DuckDuckGo? For num number one, it's uh, it does not track what you search, right? So Google tracks. It knows exactly where you've been, how long you've been on all of the sites that you've ever searched it keeps a record. Well, DuckDuckGo doesn't, okay? That's the first thing. But more than that for me personally, why I really like it is because they have what's called bangs. B-A-N-G-S. And what is a bang? Well, let's say that I really like baseball. Well, and I do like baseball. Let's say that I want to, if I just search the word baseball in my address bar, okay, notice now that it searches using DuckDuckGo. It's not Google. So it has a slightly different layout, but, you know, it's about the same as if you were to search using uh, Google. So you can type in images and videos and news and so on. Okay. Now, this is what I really like about DuckDuckGo. Let's say that I want to search Wikipedia, the term baseball. Notice what I typed in here, exclamation mark, W, and then baseball. Now, what is this going to do? It's going to actually search within Wiki, Wikipedia, I should say, the term baseball. Let's say I wanted to find research about baseball. Notice I have an exclamation mark the word scholar, what, what's that going to do? It's going to search automatically in Google Scholar, right? So I don't have to go to Google Scholar and then search. It's all super fast, super easy. Let's say I want to go to my, Microsoft Academic Search. I can type in exclamation mark MSA and it takes me directly there. Let's say that I want to translate the word baseball because I, I want to know what it is in Spanish so guess what I type in exclamation mark translate what's that going to do it's going to take me automatically to translate now I may have to change the language but it takes me directly to it in this translate you can translate whole phrases you can use the word translate and then type in a long sentence and it'll do it right there on the spot. You can do it right all within your address bar. All right, so this is why I really like DuckDuckGo. I want to share this with you. If this is something that you find useful, I think for me personally it's very useful just because it simplifies and speeds up the search process if I want to search for something in other websites. If you search, or if you go to DuckDuckGo, you'll notice they have over 13,000 bangs. A bang, this is a bang, translate, that's a bang, that's a bang. If I want to search Twitter, baseball, I can type in exclamation mark Twitter, and it searches baseball and, and Twitter. So I want to share with you DuckDuckGo. It's, of course, free. It's easy to use. It works in any type of device, in any type of browser. And I think it's pretty cool. So I'm sharing this with you today. DuckDuckGo. There's my commercial. All right, friends. My dear friends, today 
I want to start talking about podcasts. All right. This week, I'm going to ask you to complete your first podcast. Hopefully, all of you have had a chance to go into... Let me go back to Teams under Files. Yesterday, we were working in our spreadsheet. Okay. Please continue working and changing, modifying the spreadsheet as you need to. If you haven't completed the spreadsheet, please try to do so. But go ahead and try to complete the spreadsheet. Make sure your name is up on here. If for some reason it's not, you may add it. All right, but this is going to be our ledger. This is going to be our main page to access all of our podcasts for the semester. And this week we're going to complete our first podcast. But what do we include? So what I want to do is I want to start today. I want to give you an option. I'm going to try to give you an example of how I would do my first podcast. Our first podcast for this week, I'm going to ask everyone to record a podcast for three minutes, a three minute episode for this week. Three minutes. All right. Three minutes of you speaking about anything you want related to your topic, related to the podcasts that you chose to listen to. Again, I would recommend that you try to listen to your podcast a little bit each day. Right? Every day, try to listen to your podcast. This is the main purpose of doing this activity is to get used to listening, get it, get in a routine, a habit. A habit is something that you are getting used to doing repeatedly, right? Hopefully on a daily basis. All right. So what do we include in our podcast? So if we're going to include a three minute episode, I want to try to provide today an example. All right. So, I'm going to practice by using a timer because I don't know how long I'm going to speak. I, I hope that I can speak long enough. I hope I don't speak too long because I do want it to be three minutes. All right. Try not to go much longer than three minutes. All right. But what should we include? All right. I'm going to give you an example and I want you to pay close attention to not just what I say, but the organization how am I organizing my podcast? Hopefully you have something to write with or if you have a document open on your computer, on your cell phone that you can take notes, I would like for you to write down the structure of the podcast that I'm going to, the episode that I'm going to try to do right now for you. All right. So try to take notes, pay attention to the structure of what I say. And also, of course, check out the mistakes I make. Now, when you guys are doing your episode, we want the best episode, right? But don't worry about having a few mistakes, right? As long as it, you keep going, just try to keep going through your podcast. This is also an exercise of trying to speak for three minutes continuously about your topic. All right, here we go. I'm going to try this. You guys listen to me. And then you can critique me, you can evaluate how I do, if I do a good job or if I do a, a poor job, if I do a bad job. All right, here we go. Hello and welcome to In the Classroom, an educational podcast making teaching and learning more transparent. My name is Benjamin Stewart. Today is September 3rd, 2020. Today I'd like to talk about uh, differentiation, differentiating content differentiating process, and differentiating product. The first, differentiating content. Tomlinson mentioned in her episode, in her podcast, that it's important to try to differentiate content so that learners are able to uh, make decisions, take responsibility in their own learning by being able to choose, for example, different websites that they can access in order to participate in the given activity. This is really important because as students have different interests and mindsets and they also have uh, different ways of going about accessing different, uh, different um, activities, they have 
ways of looking at different ways of content. So they can choose. They can, if, if they are given the opportunity, and they can choose the different uh, types of uh, websites, for example, maybe even books that they want to use. But some students may need guidance, right? They may or may not be used to having uh, the different ways of choosing the, the different contents that they want to use. The second way that you can differentiate learning is by differentiating the process. So try to give students different ways of completing a task. Right, So maybe they want to work individually, maybe they want to work in pairs, small groups, maybe they want to make decisions about who's going to do what and when and how. So as the instructor, you can facilitate that process by trying to help them make decisions about the best way that they can complete a particular task. The third way you can differentiate is through product, giving them options to decide what kind of end product should they complete. Maybe it's a video, maybe it's an audio, maybe it's a brochure that they have to complete. Maybe it's even just a poster board, right, that they can complete and then um, share with the class. But also try to guide them and make sure that the decisions that they make, that the products that they choose are aligned with the objectives of the activity. So differentiation, differentiating the contents, differentiating the process, differentiating the product. These are three ways that Tomlinson mentioned, and I personally like having these options available And because, again, I think uh, having students provide the feedback and take ownership of their own learning is very important as I think it motivates them to uh, participate and engage more into the activity. This has been In the Classroom. My name is Benjamin Stewart, making teaching and learning more transparent. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode. All right. What do you think? What did you notice in my example? How did I structure my episode? I like it. What do you think? What did you, what could you tell? Can anybody identify how I structured it? And if you liked something about it, because I did make some mistakes in there, if what did you like or dislike about it? What do you think? Try to be as specific as possible. For example, I like how you like your voice. I was attent to your voice. Because it was like loud, like a good, I don't know how, sonido. Okay. How you say sound? All right. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm going to, I'm in the chat, guys. So if you want to open up the chat, I'd like to write out some ideas, right? So as we, as we talk. So sound. Now, what do we mean by sound? So can anyone elaborate? What do you, what, what else can you say about the sound of, my voice for good or, or worse, right? It, it doesn't have to be all positive, but what what's important about one's voice when you produce a podcast? Can I speak in Spanish? And I want to tell something, but I don't know how to tell it. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Bueno, no sé, o sea, lo que me gustó o yo siento es que o sea, como que lo hizo en forma de platicar a las personas, así, pues, contarles como fluido. O sea, no se vio como si estuviera leyendo así, por ejemplo, no sé, la danza es no sé qué, no sé qué, no sé qué. O sea, como que darle la entonación para que, pues, suene interesante, ¿no? Porque, pues, no es como que para nada interesante que alguien, pues, solo esté como que leyendo. All right. Es como Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write out a phrase in English, and you tell me if this is what you're referring to. If it's something different, then, then tell me. So know what you want to say. Be prepared and know what you want to say. All right? Good. What else? What else did you notice about my example? 
And I, I don't know, the timer didn't work, so I'm not even sure how long I spoke, but, but more or less three minutes. What else can you say about my example? I want to say that your voice, um, I mean, you didn't make uh, a lot of stuff, and this is really important because uh, if we are talking and we are saying like, um, 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 like, it, it is not, interesting yet, or it doesn't sound interesting for for us so for example if i listen to something like this um, i would change the podcast all right so what makes it interesting right so what how can you make your podcast interesting now jazz mentioned slogan that, that's a very good observation can does anyone or can anyone remember what the slogan was in my example? I th Attitude, good Vanessa. Attitude, but be specific because make it interesting. You have to have a good attitude. I'm really curious about the specifics. What? How, how do you sound interesting? How do you project? a good attitude in your broadcast, in the way that you speak. I really Can want... I say, yeah, go ahead. Can I say what I wrote? Sure. Um, I wrote, like, for, like, in my opinion, for a good podcast, you say, you have to say good morning or, like, how do you say saludo? Like a Greeting. Good... You have to have a greeting, yes. So, have a greeting, uh, say your name, the date, uh, say what you're talking to talk about, and ask questions that have their answers to make it more interesting. Mention websites to make it more attractive. Never stop talking about your topic. Give examples if you need it. Um, and be fluency. Have a good attitude. That sounds emotional and no boring. Be prepared and know exactly what are you speaking about. All very good uh, comments, I would say. Very good. Those are all very important aspects, right, to try to take into consideration. Um, I don't remember if I ask questions, but certainly that's a very good way of either starting or introducing a task or your, your episode, right? Start with a question. I that because uh, yesterday at night I was listening to my podcast and sometimes they um, ask questions that they um, all answer to make it more like interesting because maybe the one who is listening to the podcast has the same question so they just give you the answer. That's right. Maybe you ask the question and you have to um you don't give them really the answer until the end of your broadcast, right? To kind of hook the audience and say, okay, I really want to know what she thinks about the answer to that question. But it also makes the target audience listen. Now, target audience, target audience. What do I mean by target audience? Can you? Uh, oh. Target audience. What? What do I mean by target audience and who will be your target audience? Like in a specific audience. Uh, so, for example, if I'm talking about football or soccer, maybe my target um, audience would be uh, teens or maybe adults. Um, I don't know. Right. The anybody else? Anybody else have uh, anything to add about target audience? It's in a specific um, audience. I want my how what? No, no, nothing. <laughs> yeah. It's the same that he said. <laughs> right. The key here I want you to think about, guys, is the word target. Because let's say I'm talking about soccer or football, football, soccer, and. Let's say that I'm talking about sport injuries among soccer players. And maybe the sport, the injuries that I'm talking about are very specific to younger adults, maybe even children, right? 
So depending on the topic, depending on your interest, you may have to think of a very specific set of groups of people that are going to get the most out of your podcast. Those groups of people that are going to enjoy your podcast, that are really going to relate. So think of the target audience, not just a broad set of groups of people, not just everybody that's interested in soccer, but let's say soccer moms, moms who have children who like soccer, and you're addressing to them, to the parents of soccer um, soccer players that are young, that are children, and you're talking about sport injuries because you want to try to avoid, right, younger children injuring themselves playing soccer, right? So you're talking maybe to parents of the soccer because you're probably not speaking to the children because they don't care. They're not even thinking about getting injured. They're just playing. They love the sport. But your target audience is going to be specifically parents who have children who love soccer and the parents want to avoid their children getting injured, okay, as an example. So when I started my podcast, I said, hello and welcome to In the Classroom, an educational podcast making teaching and learning more transparent. So I just did three things. What were the three things that I just did? Your name. Okay. Date. The slogan. All right, I'm going to give the example again. You're, you're right when I mentioned my episode earlier. But right now I'm going to give you an example, and I'd like for you to identify in order the three things that I include. Okay, here we go. Ready? Hello, and welcome to In the Classroom, an educational podcast making teaching and learning more transparent. I just did three things. What were those three things? The um, saludo. Okay. How do you say that? Mm. The greeting, right? Then what came after the greeting? The topic that you're going to talk about. The topic? Yes. Are you sure? The, the name of the no. podcast. Oh. Right. The title of the podcast. I said, hello. I said, uh, hello, and welcome to In the Classroom. So, what's the title of the cl what's the title of the podcast? Classroom. In. In the classroom. In the classroom, and then what came after the title of the podcast? That's the thing you were going to talk about. Hello, and welcome to In the Classroom, an educational podcast making teaching and learning more transparent. Yeah. Ah, uh, your slogan. Slogan. Your slogan. Yeah. slogan. Yeah. <laughs> right? I know it's hard to hear because I was saying it kind of fast. Hello, and welcome to In the Classroom, an educational podcast making teaching and learning more transparent. Right. So, think about your own podcast you need a title and you need a slogan. In my case, the title, In the Classroom. That's the name of the podcast, right? Every episode, I'm going to start by saying, hey, this is In the Classroom, In the Classroom, In the Classroom. And then I'll follow up saying what it is. What is In the Classroom? Well, it's an educational podcast making teaching and learning more transparent. Now, through the title and through the slogan, my question is this. Who's my target audience? The students. Us. And who are you? Who are you? The students. <laughs> students? Any student? Any student under the face well, of the earth? College. Any uh, person student. who wants to learn? 
Any student who wants to learn. Wow, that is a big audience. Any Here's, person. I'm sorry? Any person who wants to learn. All right, here's the, here's the thing I want you to think about, guys. It's not just the audience. It's the target audience. Who's my target audience? Who do you think? In the classroom, an educational podcast making teaching and learning more transparent. I, I know, I know, I know. What do you the think? Teachers. The teachers, because it's teaching and learning, so the teachers are going to know how to teach. All right, so... All right, so good. We're getting closer now. This is a, a, a target audience, not just any teacher. Now, some of you mentioned students. Now, what kind of students, in addition to teachers, might be a target audience for my podcast? What's a possibility? What group of students? Be a teacher too. That's right. They're studying to be teachers. Exactly. Right. You guys said, well, us. Well, who are you? Well, you are studying to be teachers, right? You're not medicine. You're not learning medicine. You're not uh, in engineering. You're not in any other major. You're in, you're studying to be teachers. So possibly it could be for student teachers. It could be in-service teachers, teachers who are working. It could be teachers who maybe don't uh, have a lot of contact with other teachers who want to share, right? But that's the target audience, okay? So that's what I want you to think about when you develop your own title and your own slogan. Now, I could have said, you know, I said, uh, hello and welcome. I said, hello. I could have said, good morning. I could have said, you know, happy hump day. Or whatever. I, I could use all kinds of different ways to greet my audience. How long did the greeting, the title, and the slogan last? Hello and welcome to In the Classroom and Educational Podcast, Making Teaching and Learning More Transparent. How long? Six seconds. Six seconds. Yeah, it's six seconds. Six seconds, eight seconds. So when you're preparing your own greeting, title, and slogan, I would try to keep it less than 15 seconds at the most, probably less than 10, but certainly less than 15. You want to get right to it. So the name of the title, the slogan, greet your audience, and then you're off, okay? Now, what else did you recall from the structure? I'm curious about how I organized my ideas. I started with the greeting, then the title. After that, you can say, like, which audience you're going to talk to. Okay, you certainly could, all right? You could do that. Uh, you don't have to do that, but you could. And sometimes if you have a title and a slogan that infers the target audience, then it's not necessary. But I'll leave it up to you. You decide if it's necessary to mention the target audience. All right? So sometimes the target audience will depend on the episode. Sometimes the target audience will depend on the episode. So it just depends on how you want to begin and how much information you want to include. Okay, so that's a possibility. What else after the title of the podcast and after the slogan? What did I do? You remember? With uh, an introduction. All right, and do you remember what I did in the introduction? What I mentioned? That you start with a question. Did I? I don't even remember. Okay. Um, and well, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. I don't remember if I did or not. Thanks. No. I could have. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. You and you could start with a question. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the, starting with a question. 
and, and maybe I did start, I, d I really don't remember, but I, what did I do in the introduction? Do you recall? No, honestly, no, I didn't. Right. What I did is I explained briefly the three points that I was going to talk about. I think I mentioned differentiation and three ways of differentiating. So I, I mentioned either specifically the three or I at least said there are three ways that you can differentiate. All right. And then I started off number one and then I started off talking about each one. So I told the audience, I said, hey, I've got three things I want to talk about. This, this, and this. And maybe I did it or maybe I didn't, but I, I should have, right? You can start off by saying, okay, this guy, this is what I'm going to talk about in this episode. One, two, and three. Three is always a good number. There's something magical about three when you're presenting anything. It doesn't matter if it's for three minutes or three hours. But it could be two. Maybe it's four, right? But you want to have a list of items that you say from the very beginning, hey, I'm going to talk about this, I'm going to talk about this, I'm going to talk about this. This is These are the three things. And then... Teacher. Yes. But, sorry, sorry for the interruption. That's okay. No, that's okay. But how do you do to, to keep talking without a stop? Because when uh, in high school, I did a podcast and I had to write all the ideas to do those myself. So I saw you were talking and talking and talking and talking and you didn't stop. All right, so that's a good question. So, because so actually, there, go ahead. <laughs> because he speak English, we don't. No, but but here's here's the thing. Here's what I want you guys to try to do. And I know this is our first time, so I I understand that. But here's what I want us to try to work on is in our podcast. I want you to prepare. How can you prepare for your podcast? Well, think about what you want to say. Now, how can you prepare on what you want to say? Well, this week we worked with mind maps. If you like using mind maps, if that helps you, you write out a mind map about the three things that you're going to talk about, including the details. The mind maps don't have a lot of words. They shouldn't have a lot of words. They should be words or phrases, very brief, little text, but it should include the key points, the key ideas that you want to say. Now, if you want to use an outline, you can also use an outline, but the point here is that you prepare by writing out the key words and you practice before you do the podcast on delivering the ideas. Okay, so you practice delivering the ideas. So in my case, right, in my example, I need to know what I want to say about content differentiation. That was one of the concepts. Differentiating content. I need to say, okay, can I talk for 30 seconds about Content differentiation. Okay. The second point, differentiating the process. Now, what can I say about differentiating the process? We need to think about what can you talk about, right, without writing everything out, okay? Don't write out the whole thing and try to memorize it. That's the worst thing that you can do. And don't even go down that road. Don't even, it's, it's a waste of time. But what is not a waste of time is for you to think about and write keywords around certain ideas about your topics, in my case, differentiating process. What can I talk about? Well, students' choice. They can work in teams. They can work in pairs, right? I, I already had this prepared. Now, whether I write it out, whether I listen to it so many times, because maybe in the podcast they talked about it over and over and over about differentiating you know, uh, process, uh, the content or differentiating the process or differentiating the product. So here is, it's a combination, guys, of listening to your podcasts, taking notes, doing a mind map, and practicing. And the best way to practice, again, is 
using key terms, key ideas. If you find some new vocabulary, maybe write out new vocabulary and try to introduce those new words when you practice. But it's really about finding ways to organize your ideas around that, right? And it's okay if you need to glance down at your notes. But ideally, if you practice, it's going to be it's going to get easier and easier to speak about each of your topics. Try to choose two to three key points in your episode. We're only talking about three minutes for this week. Now, your introduction, right? The introduction is going to include the greeting, the title of the podcast, the slogan, and introducing the three points that you want to talk about. That's the intro. That's going to last probably 15 seconds, at the most 20 seconds. Then you're going to speak probably two and a half minutes, less than two and a half minutes, about two to three different points. That's not a lot of time. But you need to practice so that you feel comfortable with delivering that information. When you finish at the end of the episode, what are you going to do? You're going to repeat the title of the podcast. You've been listening to. What have you been listening to? You've been listening to In the Classroom. What is it? An educational podcast making teaching and learning more transparent. Thank the audience. Thank you for listening. And what do I do? Encourage them to listen again. See you in the next episode. See you in the next video. We'll see you next time. Right? We want to encourage them to um, to listen again to the next episode. Okay? So you can. that's how you can conclude your podcast. Now, there's one other thing that I haven't, that I didn't mention that you could include in your podcast. I didn't do this in my example, but you could. And again, my example is just one way of doing it, right? It's not the only way to do it, but there's one other thing you can do. You can do what's called call to action. A call to action is asking your audience, your target audience, to take some sort of action. Okay, that's all it is. So at the end of your podcast, you could say, okay, so try differentiating in your classroom. See how it works. Send me a chat in Twitter, right? And let me know how, or send me a a message in Facebook to let me know how it went. Try it in your class. See how it works. See how your students respond. That's a call to action. You're You're reaching out to your audience and you're saying, hey, try this, right? Have you thought about it? Try it and see what happens. And then you're asking them to do something, right? To either respond, share in their social media or whatever. Okay, that's an option. You don't have to, but it might be appropriate depending on the topic of your podcast, a call to action. So the the outro, you have an intro and an outro. The outro is the same. You're introducing the title of your podcast the slogan, maybe a call to action, and then asking them, hey, thank you. You you thank them, and you maybe ask them to watch or listen to your next episode. Basically, that's the organization for your, your podcast, all right? Now, there's variations, but that's the idea. So I wanted to start today's session by giving you kind of an idea, giving you an example And I want now all of you guys to go into your groups and I want you to work together in your groups. Now, what could you possibly talk about in your groups? All kinds of things. In fact, I I included a list because I didn't want to forget anything. There's a list of things that you can include in your discussions today with your group. All right, I'm going to open up here the task. You guys can see all the tasks that we do here in Microsoft Teams under tasks. I'm going to open up here a list of things that you guys can talk about and work together in. It's very important, guys, and I know that it's difficult as we get started getting used to speaking in English. I want you guys to really help each other and encourage each other to speak in English. All right. So here, actually, I don't see it. Let me open it up here. 
All right, so what are some topics, some things that you can talk about with your classmates? And you can decide as your as a team, you know, how you can do this. Number one, the purpose of your podcast. I want you to share with each other the purpose. Why are you doing this podcast besides the fact it's just a, a, an assignment? But what's the perp- the real purpose? Do, who's the target audience? You can share if you want the podcast that you have chosen. Try to come up with a podcast title and share the title with your classmates if you're having Questions about your title, help each other, ask each other questions. If you have a tagline, you can talk about that. You can share that and get some feedback. What do you think? This is my tagline. Do you like it? Do you have any suggestions? Is it grammatically correct? Does it make sense? Ask your classmates. Practice. If you're prepared, you can practice your three-minute episode. Maybe we're not ready yet to practice but you could. These are all possible things that you could talk about. You could talk about the call of action for your particular podcast, for your episode. Do you have something that you want your audience to do? Are you addressing a certain problem or a solution? You can talk about that with your classmates. This is the problem or the solution. And you can also talk about how you want to organize your three points. What are your three points or two points? How do you want to organize? What comes first? What comes second? And what comes third? How do you want to organize that? And there are other things you can talk about. I mean, these are a lot of different things here that we can talk about in our uh, discussions with our group. But try, please, to talk in English. You know, if I don't, if I'm not there and you're speaking in Spanish, you're, it's not helping you, right? This is for your um, your benefit to try to practice as much as possible. Even if you're asking questions, how do you say see ya in English? Ask it in sure. English. Exactly. Sure. Instead of saying, como se dice see ya in English? Right. How do you say this? Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat that, please? Uh, can you speak slower, please? Uh, right. These are These are prompts in English that you can use instead of just saying, ¿Puedes repetirlo, por favor? O, ¿Puedes hablar más lento? No sé. Right, without speaking in Spanish. Did right. You, the, yes, go ahead. So what you're saying is that in our teams, we're just going to talk about what our podcast is going to be about, and we're going to like try to formulate like a little text of what we're going to say or what we need to know helping each other in the group? That's correct. The The list that I just provided, these are all possible things that you can talk about, right? Para que no entre en su grupo y dice, okay, ahora qué? ¿Qué vamos a hacer? ¿Qué vamos a hablar? Okay, ¿qué vamos a practicar? These are all the things that you could talk about. Y todo depende, dependiendo de dónde están ustedes en el proceso para crear tu propio podcast, va a depender igual que van a hablar en su grupo. Pero traten de hablar todo en inglés. ¿Sí? Traten de apoyar a tus compañeros. Right? Encourage them to speak English. This is where uh, you guys make the most, uh, where you learn the most in these small groups. And I know it's hard. It's difficult because there's a lot of new things going on. But rely on your teammates. Help each other. And you know, try to talk about these topics, whatever whatever questions and things you want to share, try to share with your classmates and try to give time to everyone to share with their classmates. And it doesn't matter what it is. You can, maybe one person's going to talk about their title of the podcast. Someone else might talk about their tagline. Someone else might say, well, I'm thinking about these three points. What do you think? I'm thinking about talking about this first and then this and then this. What do you think? Is that good? Is that a good idea? Do you have, and does anyone have any suggestions? Right? Ask each other for suggestions and, and provide okay. suggestions. You guys decide. You're, at the end of the day, you guys are deciding what to do. This is your podcast. But ask for advice. Ask for advice. Hey, teacher, Can, 
Yes. We have to, well, we need to have three different points or ideas to talk about in each podcast, like weekly. Yeah, I would say entre dos a cuatro puntos, right? I would say three, two to four points. Three is a really good number, right? But it just depends on what it is you're you're talking about. Okay, so, you know, two points, three points, maybe four points at the most because it's it's a short episode, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, okay. but, you know, try to break it down to at least two, right? At least two, probably three. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do because um, my topic is really like, for me, it's really interesting, but it's also like uh, a weird for people who, who maybe don't know English too much because uh, it has some words that maybe sometimes I don't even know what it means. So I'm going to try not to speak, like, not to say a lot of points about my topic because I know maybe it could be like confusing. Or yeah, and it, that's a good point. Uh, that Monse, right? Yeah. Okay, so keep it simple. Your job is to, you know, make something maybe complex, make it really simple and organized. So primero voy a hablar de este y este, nada más. Primero este, blah blah blah. Y este este está relacionado al segundo punto. So el segundo punto, blah 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 blah, y ya. But Really basic, simple, straightforward. Don't make it complicated. Organization, right, is really important. All right, guys, I want to stop because okay. I want to give you some time to, to, to discuss with your groups. Of course, if you guys have questions, come back and, and, and let me know. But really, I want us to focus on these group sessions to help each other and offer suggestions and offer uh, help. Ask for help. Don't be afraid of to ask your classmates for help. This is why we're doing this, all right? And please try to speak as much in English. All right, I'm going to shut up now, and I want you guys to get into your groups. In, in Microsoft Teams, I included, again, the list. If you forgot which team you're in, you can find your list somewhere. Here it is, okay? This is the same group list as Monday. Also, sorry, one last thing. Make sure that you... Go into your meeting, you record your meeting, and you upload your meeting to the files folder for week two, just exactly like we did on Monday. Record your sessions and then upload it to files for week two. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic. Go ahead and get started. We'll come back to class. We will reconvene at 9.35 to close the class. Okay, guys, we'll see you in a little bit. Yes, thank you, teacher. Uh, guys, if anyone goes into their group and you're the only one, go ahead and begin setting up the meeting. Go ahead and hit record, record yourself, and you begin speaking and discussing your own podcast, even if you're the only person in there, just so that you get credit for a participation. Hopefully your teammates will arrive later today. Uh, if this is going to require you guys as a team to meet outside of class, then you need to do that because I'm, I'm giving credit for participation, for uh, everyone contributing uh, in the group. All right, so uh, right now, if they're arriving late or, um, you know, just so that you get credit, make sure you go ahead, record yourself in the meeting and begin discussing whatever you can discuss, even post questions that maybe your teammates can answer later, uh, but uh, mention as much as you can about your own podcast, thinking about the different points that we talked about here a few minutes ago. So, for example, if, if we want to talk about uh, our podcast like a practice, uh, that's what you're waiting for? Or, or 
um, or we can just give suggestions to to our our classmates. And basically, you can you know either is fine, right? I I totally expect everyone to be talking about different things about their podcasts. It just depends on where where you are in the process, what questions you have in your preparation. So, todo puede ser. Todo depende en dónde están cada uno de ustedes en el proceso a preparar su propia y primer podcast. Entonces, sí, hay que preguntar, eh, apoyar a sus compañeros, preguntar a ver qué opinan eso, ¿verdad? But it all depends on, um, you know, how you're preparing and where you are in the process. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Teacher, I got another question. Yes. Uh, do we have to record the call? Yes, everything needs to be recorded just like on Monday, right? Vamos a grabar todo igual lo como hicimos el lunes um, para que también, eh, bueno, uno, yo puedo ver quién participó, quién no. Y la segunda, al final voy a reunir todas las grabaciones como lo, lo que hicimos el lunes en este, de esta semana. Like as evidence. Exactly. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. All right, my friends, it's 9.35. Hopefully everyone's back or is coming back uh, to close today's session. What I'd like to do here is uh, show you guys again just as a reminder, okay? Today, as we worked in our groups, it's really important that everyone not only create a meeting but record your meeting. Now, ideally... Everyone is here and participating in your group. But if it turns out that you're the only person in your group, then I would recommend that you still start your meeting and record and you just discuss any of these topics that we've talked about. Anything that relates to your, your podcast, uh, the purpose, the target audience, you can just basically talk to yourself until someone else joins your meeting. Now, today and tomorrow, let me go ahead and tell you what we're going to do tomorrow, Friday. I want to give you guys time in class tomorrow also to prepare for your first podcast. Remember that your podcast should last three minutes. It should have an intro. It should have a body that is discussing the points, two to four points that you want to talk about. And it should have an outro. Today I provided an example, and it doesn't have to be exactly like I did, all right? There's some variation, but have some form of intro, some form of outro. You can use the podcast that you listen to also as examples how you organize your podcast. I'm not expecting everyone to organize them exactly like I did it. I want to provide you an example as well as, obviously, the examples of your podcast. Tomorrow, we're going to start at 8 o'clock, and I'm going to give you class time to continue working in your groups, just like what we did today. It's very important that you record your live sessions, all right? And, of course, I want you to talk and, and converse with each other in English as much as possible, but if there are moments where no one's speaking, that's okay. If we're talking about working together for, for an hour or even an hour and a half, and there goes you know a certain amount of time with nobody speaking, that's okay. But I want you to speak as much as possible, ask each other questions. Uh, basically, it's more conversational than it is just practicing. 
I think each one of you can practice on your own uh, the delivery of your episode. Use the group work to get suggestions. Use group work to practice your English in any of the aspects that relate to the podcast. Remember when you finish, remember to download your recording from today and upload it to files and week two, the folder week two. Now, uh, and if you want to create another folder or under family responsibilities, that's fine. It doesn't matter as long as it's under week two and I can find it. Here's what I would like everyone to do, uh, please, today. The video that you upload today, I would like for you to rename it. All right. Me gustaría si puede renombrar, cambiar el nombre del archivo de, de la grabación de su reunión de hoy. Desde aquí puede renombrar así. Y hay que poner la fecha de hoy. Si quieres poner 03-09-2020, 03-09-2020. Si hay más, como más de un video de hoy, por ejemplo, si grabaron dos reuniones o dos archivos, tres archivos, hay que poner igual la fecha y nada más termina con A, B, C, dependiendo cuántos este, archivos son. Ok, porque mañana vamos a seguir igual trabajando en los grupos, grabando la, las reuniones, subiendo igual aquí en el mismo lugar, pero ya vamos a tener más archivos. Entonces mañana les pido igual cambiar el nombre. En el caso de mañana sería 0409-2020. Mañana vamos a tener clase a las 8, 8 a, a 9. 40, pero yo voy a estar aquí en clase nada más de 8 a uh, como 8.50. Tengo una junta mañana a las 9, entonces no voy a estar aquí en clase, pero les pido que sigan trabajando en su grupo mañana durante clase para aprovechar la clase, trabajando en grupo, pero apoyando eh, pues tus compañeros preparando para el primer podcast, ¿ok? Entonces, eh, mañana seguimos igual como el lunes, como el día de hoy, trabajando en los grupos y los temas que pueden practicar son estas, lo que subí, subí en, en, este, en Microsoft Teams, ¿ok? So Sorry, is, I have two questions. Yes, go ahead. So tomorrow we're going to keep working um, on what we did today, like talking about what can we say in the podcast and help each other to maybe how to do something. And my other question is, when are we going to do the podcast then? Next week? No. Uh, es para mañana, para grabar tu podcast. Sí, entonces oh. eh, quiero que... Esta es para la idea para las clases, como hoy y mañana, es trabajar en los equipos, obviamente para preparar el podcast, ¿verdad? Pero eh, mañana les pido, quiero que traten a, a grabar su podcast de tres minutos y subirlo en su carpeta de OneDrive. Sí, ah, creo que ayer practicamos de creando una, una carpeta en OneDrive dedicado a los, los audios del, del podcast. Entonces, okay. sí. So, tomorrow are we going to record in class or in the afternoon? Ok, so, I would prefer, it, it dep todo depende en cómo están, si están preparados, si ya están list listos, si han practicado con sus compañeros. Eh, por ejemplo, mañana pueden entrar, seguir trabajando, checando, hablando con sus compañeros en sus grupos. Eh, voy a dar desde 8 de la mañana, vamos a comenzar así rápido, practicando algunas cosas, ya luego vamos a entrar y tal vez, por ejemplo, pueden pasar una hora entre 8 a 9 
trabajando con su equipo y entre 9 a 10 grabando su, su podcast, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, si tú dices, no, todavía necesito más preparación, más práctica, obviamente pueden hacerlo después, en la tarde, ¿verdad? Pero les pido a, okay. a subirlo, su audio, el día de mañana, su primer episodio, right? su primera grabación. Eh, pero quiero eh, que aproveche los equipos. Quiero evidencia igual como eh, una grabación de ustedes practicando, ¿verdad? En inglés, preguntando, contestando, apoyando a sus compañeros. Sí, pero quiero evidencia que están trabajando en eso. Lo que yo no quiero es que mañana entres a las 8 sin entrando en su grupo y nada más grabando, haciendo su, su audio. No, no quiero eso. Yo prefiero que ustedes primero, como hoy y igual mañana, apoyando sus compañeros. Si está muy fácil este, qué bueno. Pues ayuda a sus compañeros dando sugerencias. Y, y ya si quieren, si están preparados mañana, no sé, a las nueve, si están de acuerdo, tu, tu equipo puede ser, ok, ahora ya vamos a seguir este, cada quien haciendo sus audios. Si dicen, deciden como equipo, no, pues prefiero, vamos a aprovechar todos los dos horas mañana uh, uh, apoyando, uh, pre, este, preguntando, ¿verdad? En el equipo, adelante, qué bueno, ¿verdad? Pero hay que trabajar como un equipo, como hoy, como hicimos el lunes, Igual mañana voy a dar así toda la clase mañana, desde las 8, a seguir con este mismo seguimiento, como este proceso, ¿verdad? Trabajando en el mismo grupo, grabando los, las, las juntas, las reuniones en línea. Igual para evidencia, yo estoy capturando, descargando todos los archivos, lo que están haciendo ustedes, porque yo quiero ver cómo están trabajando entre como equipo si ustedes entran, si una persona entra en su grupo y nadie llega ponen entras en una reunión grabar y practicar, hablar de lo que, lo que estás haciendo y nada más sigue grabando y hablando y, y ojalá pues que entren después tus compañeros si no, el mínimo tienes este, este evidencia que participaste en esta actividad yo voy a pedir mañana Um, pues miembros de tu equipo que, que no han participado que no han, han, han participado entre hoy y mañana, voy a pedir eso que me manden un correo en Teams, quiero saber quién no participó entre hoy y mañana en esta actividad pero ustedes ha, hacen lo que pueden entrando en los, este, los, las este, reuniones para compartir practicar de de, de su podcast. All right, guys, does that make sense? Is that clear what we're going to do uh, tomorrow? Teacher. Yes. So we have to. So we have today and tomorrow to upload upload our podcast. Uh, yes, but I I would ask not to finish it until tomorrow. Oh. Okay. Sí, ustedes tienen hasta mañana, no quiero, pero prefiero que no suben ahorita, porque todavía estoy así, eh, queremos uh, preparar, mejorar y apoyar tus compañeros. Sí, okay. entonces yo prefiero que esperes hasta mañana a subir, este, igual para considerar ver otra vez los este, episodios de de tus podcasts que estás escuchando, igual preparando, no sé, un mind map, este, lo que sea. Hay, hay un montón de cosas que, que hay que considerar. El título de tu podcast, hay que checar bien de, de, la, de la grammar, si está bien eso, si, si, si está bien escrito, el tagline, si tiene sentido, hablar con sus compañeros, qué opinan, así como todo eso. Entonces, para mí el proceso aquí, casi siempre el proceso es más importante del producto final. Claro, el proceso indica qué tan bueno o malo sería el, el producto final. Si tú dices, no, pues estoy listo ahorita, voy a hacerlo. Pues qué bueno, pero mañana si sigues preparando, tal vez puedes pr producir algo mejor mañana. 
que hoy, ¿verdad? Si sigues intentando. So that's the idea, guys. See, um, is try to, don't get ahead of yourself. Try not to just rush to the end product. I really want to focus Teacher. on the process. Yes. That's why you want us to listen to our podcast every day, right? Well, because I imagine that if we listen to our podcast every day or maybe once a week, uh, we can take like more ideas. Exactly. Or to talk about. That's exactly right, Monse. That's it. I mean, we can never learn too much, right? I mean, we're always learning. So if you keep listening and keep listening, you're going to get more and more information. And that's the whole point of listening, developing the listening skills. Todos los días estás escuchando algo de inglés, algo en inglés, poco a poquito, cinco minutos mínimo. Porque si no, si es, no, pues voy a escuchar, no sé, tres horas cada, los domingos. No es lo mismo de escuchar un poco cada día. Y claro, lo, la idea es yeah. escoger temas que les guste, que no es así de, oh, tengo que escuchar este. No, es algo que... Take it, te gusta. If you like something about makeup, well, great. Listen to it and learn something. Enjoy it. Oh, and it happens to be in English, right? So that's the real, that's the whole point. I want us, lo que estoy tratando hacer con ustedes is implementar como hábitos, como rutinas que ustedes están así utilizando inglés diariamente en su vida, no, nada más en lo que estamos haciendo en esta clase. ¿Verdad? Esta es la, la intención. Espero que, yeah, que logramos eso. Listen, uh, music in English every day. And podcast, well, I never realized what a podcast was, but now I also listen to my podcast every day. So thank you for well, that's, that. No, that's great. No, that, that's great. And, and that's, that's the point. I want you guys, especially this activity, to choose something that you like, right? This is not me saying, okay, you have to choose X, you know, a podcast for something that you don't like. So try to get into this activity. I know that this is new, getting into Microsoft Teams and all of that. If somebody has questions or doubts, of course, reach out to me. But my expectation is that you're helping each other, right? This is where the learning is when you guys are practicing in your groups with each other. It's not from me. Right? It's from you guys, every day, talking and helping each other. Cuando están hablando en español, no está apoyando a nadie, ni ustedes mismos. No importa, no estoy buscando que están hablando así perfectamente en inglés. No, para na no, nada. Estoy viendo si están intentando hablar en inglés. Hasta ahorita ni, ni estoy evaluando la manera que están hablando. No, no estoy... Entrando todavía eso. Nada más estoy viendo quién está participando, quién está intentando hablar en inglés para comenzar. Porque si no estamos es haciendo este, pues la evaluación pues, no tiene sentido. No, no, no va a funcionar. All right, so, okay. I'm done talking. I really don't like to go over because I know you guys have a lot of classes every day. So, Uh, we'll stop there tomorrow. Again, I'm only going to be in class. Nada más voy a, tener, este, voy a estar en clase entre 8 a 8.50. Tengo una junta mañana a las 9. Eh, pero eh, vamos a seguir trabajando mañana en clase, igual como hoy, preparando el podcast. All right, guys. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. And we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 B